Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. I'm not going to tell you to come out of that spirit. Let's stay in the spirit yes. of the living God. Yes, Amen. My name is Pastor Johnny L. Brown Jr. As you already know. Amen. I'm only saying that for the sake of the taping. Amen. I'm the pastor of Kingdom Fire Altar of Grace Ministries. Mm -hmm. And I'm here fellowshipping with my brothers and sisters in Christ at Spirit of Life Church. Amen. Where Pastor Ricky and Carlita Ferguson are the pastors. Amen. Amen. And I love it here at Spirit of Life. It's an awesome spirit here. And if you once these things that are going on lift, amen. If you're ever in the Muskegon area, I encourage you. Amen. To please stop in and visit my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I send you greetings, amen, from Kingdom Fire. Um, Lady Cherie wasn't able to arrive with me on this morning, amen. And so she stayed behind. But she told me to tell you that she loves you, amen. She said uh, her prayers are with us, amen. And so we just thank God for you, amen. I promise you I won't stay before you long, but I want to give you the word that the Lord has given, amen. I think it's befitting for us. Amen. To keep in mind what our Lord and Savior did for us over 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Amen. Before we were even formed in our mother's womb. Amen. Before we were even conceived. Amen. When we were a secret to our mother and our father. Amen. They didn't even know that they had made a baby. We were just hiding in there in an embryo or a fetus state. Amen. They didn't even know that we was there. That God had already died for us. Amen. Jesus yeah. had died for us. Amen. Yeah. Jesus had already gave his life and his blood for us. Amen. And so that's something to celebrate on today. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Yeah. That's a good place to clap. That's, yeah. that's something to celebrate. Amen. Amen. So I want to give honor to the, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank God for him being the head of my life. I thank God for the angels of this house. Pastor Carlita and Pastor Ricky Ferguson. Amen. Amen. Pastor Ricky and Pastor Carlita Ferguson. Amen. Amen. I thank God for you and all of the uh, all of the saints here at the house, the, the ministers, the evangelists. Amen. The the officers, the deacons, amen. I thank God for all of you, amen. Without further ado, um, let's let's go ahead and get into the word. Amen. amen. How many know that somebody had to pave the way for us? Yeah. Amen. Amen. There were some people who went before us that laid a foundation so that we could stand on it right now today, amen. amen. Right. Our Lord and Savior paved the way, amen. The patriarchs, amen. Even Adam and his fallen and, and, and God covering still was uh, uh, paving the way. Yeah. Amen. Noah paved the way. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob paved the way. Amen. Elijah and Elisha paved the way. Yeah. King David and King Solomon paved the way. Amen. So there are he thought there are elders who went before us who paved the way. Amen. And I would not be remiss to uh, to uh, to also uh, send out love to the uh, uh, beloved. Uh, Wells family in their um, in their time of mourning for Bishop amen. Nathaniel Wells Jr. Amen, an awesome man of God, and so we just want to give honor what honor and do because that's another uh, great man of God, a pillar that he was a pillar in this community, yeah. and he paved the way. Amen. amen, and so we thank God for the leaders in this community. Amen, all over. Amen. So the thought that I, I have in mind, Amen, is going to come from John. Go to the book of John. We're going to go to um, John 19. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Yeah, we're going to John. Amen. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Hallelujah. So when we look, when we're looking at this picture, Amen. We have, we have, Jesus has has gone from has been going from judgment hall to judgment hall. He is he has been betrayed, Amen, by one of his beloved uh, disciples, mm -hmm. Amen, and given into the hands of his enemies. Um, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are, are, are inciting the crowd against him. They, they want to see him um, dealt with. They really just want him out of the picture, amen. Yeah. And so before I go any further, let's go to the scriptures. I want to go to uh, chapter 19 and go to verse 7. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, so it may sound a little different from yours. Amen. Verse 7, it says, the Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. Drop down to verse 13. You're going to read 13 and 14 as well. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat 
in a place that is called the pavement. But in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, behold your king. Behold your king. Amen. When we look at the word Gabbatha, Gabbatha is the Arabic name of a place in Jerusalem that is also referred to by the Greek name of uh, Lithostros. That's L-I-T-H-O-S-T-R-O-S-T-O-S, -O -O Lithostros. Amen. And it is a place of, it is the place of the trial of Jesus before his cru crucifixion. Amen. The, the name Gabbatha, when you spell that word, which you can see it in your Bible, amen, the name uh, Gabbatha is an Arabic word, the language spoken commonly in, in at that time. That was the language that they spoke at that time in Arabic, in Judea, amen. And it is not mere, it's not, it is not merely just a translation of Lehithosros, which properly means the tessellated or Mosaic pavement where the judgment seat stood before which was extended to the place itself in front of Pilate's Praetorium. Amen. And so where that pavement lay, get this, where that pavement lay, this was proved by the practice of St. John, who elsewhere gives Arabic names as distinctly belonging to places, not as mere translations of the Greek. This is proved also because Gabbatha is derived from a root meaning, meaning back or elevation. Amen. Meaning back or elevation, which refers not to the kind of pavement, but to the elevation of the place in question. Hear that again, people. It refers not to the kind of pavement, not because it's tessellated or that it's a stone pavement, but it's it's this reference for it's a place, but to the ele it's a place of elevation, mm -hmm. amen. And in in this place, and and thus appears, and, and thus it thus appears. I'm sorry, it thus appears that two names, Lahithros and Gabbath and Gabbathel, were due to different characteristics of the spot where Pilate condemned Jesus to death. The Arabic name was derived from the configuration of that spot, with the Greek name derived from the nature of its pavement. From the nature of its pavement. I'm going some, I'm, I'm laying the foundation right now, yeah. as you can see. Amen. So when we look at Gabbatha, or you can call it the ridge of the house, or you can look at it as the temple mound, on part of which the, uh, a fortress was built upon it. Amen. The temple mound was covered with tessellated pavement. Amen. I'm studying going there. Lahitha stone, a stone paved. It, it, it was the, a judgment seat or a bima. That's B-M-A. Amen. That's another term that they use for judgment seat in their day and time. Was placed on this pavement outside the hall of the Praetorium. Mm -hmm. The judgment hall. Remember that Jesus has been taken from judgment hall to judgment hall, and now they're trying to figure out what to do with Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, Pilate wanted to just set Jesus free. Yeah. After he heard the report that this man claims to be the son of God, therefore he wanted to really just release him because he found no fault in him. Amen. Amen. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I will. Amen. So when we look at Gabbatha, the place that Jesus is uh, the, the place where uh, Pilate is seated or uh, the seat of judgment where Pilate is seated and he's judging our Lord and Savior. Gabbatha, uh, amen, is elevated or you can also call it a platform. The Hebrew or Chaldee appellation of a place also called pavement where judgment, where the judgment seat or bema was planted. From his place on which Pilate delivered our Lord to death, you'll find that in John 19 verse 13, was a tessellated platform outside the Praetorium on the western hill of Jerusalem for Pilate brought Jesus forth from there to it. He brought him there from to, to it. So now he's 
Uh, now, there is something happening, amen, in the midst of what I'm saying to you. Fire is this place, this specific, this specific place, and what it is constructed of, or what it's looking of, or what it is, amen, in that time that Jesus is going through the judgment, amen? Mm -hmm. So, number one, amen, if you take your notes, number one, Gabbatha was is the elevated place. It's an elevated place. The elevated place was a platform for the glory of God being demonstrated through the complete obedience of Christ Jesus our Lord and a judgment seat for all things. Did you hear me? Yeah. And a judgment seat for all things that we were all guilty of before the crucifixion. So in other words, the place that Jesus, it was a platform for Jesus to be judged for the very things that we are all guilty of because he is a man that knew no sin. Come on. Amen. When he was when, when he was conceived in his mother's womb, amen, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares unto us that when Jesus was conceived, his mother was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, and then she conceived in her womb the son that we that she named Jesus Christ, the seed of God. Amen. amen. She conceived the seed of God, and that seed grew in her. Amen. And, and that seed was a male child, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Yeah. So when we look at this platform, amen, or we look at the judgment seat of all things that uh, that were that we are that we were, because we saved now that we were guilty of, yeah. amen. Before the crucifixion, Romans uh, three twenty three says, "For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God." Amen. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's not any person on the face of this planet that has met up to the expectations or the criteria of God. That's why Jesus had to come. Yes. Amen. Because we did not meet up to the qualifications or the criteria of God's plan or God's statutes or God's way of doing things and how he are when his original design to cre create man in his image and his likeness yeah. because of the fall of the man Adam amen yeah. because he had fallen everything in him fell yeah. amen because everything in him fell guess what his offsprings were born in a fallen state yeah. that's why Jesus had to come amen and so now we see the platform that Jesus has been put on see Man, I don't want to get it here. I'm just trying to help you understand something about what is happening right now. So when we look at that as being a platform, amen, and we recognize according to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, amen, it was a place of exposure. A show and showcase the humility of our Lord in the hands of the rulers in the in the land at that time, yeah. and it showed the heart of the religious leaders and how they incited the people against Jesus. Not only did they incite the Jews against Jesus, but they were also trying to incite the Roman uh, government against Jesus. They wanted him to be dealt with, but they wanted to keep their hands off of him because they did not want it to be said that they had slayed the Lord and our Lord and Savior. They didn't want to be looked at as somebody that was evil and wicked, so they wanted to leave the dirty work up to Pilate. Come on. They, Pilate even said, listen, I'm going to give them back to you. Y'all crucify them. This y'all law. This ain't got nothing. This ain't Roman business. This, this Jewish business. Y'all handle y'all business. Yeah. Don't put this on me. Yeah. He, he was afraid. That man, Pilate was afraid. Uh -huh. He had a choice. Come on. He had a choice. He could have let Jesus go. Yeah. But because they, but because the Pharisees and the Sadducees said, if you, if you don't do this, then you are not a friend of Kassai. Amen. And you are portraying the very one that you pledge allegiance to. That's right. Oh, God. Hallelujah. So he was a rock in a hard place. Yeah. He had some decisions to make. And uh, if you look at the scriptures, amen, it said that his wife had bad dreams all night and said, listen, yeah. just pertain to this guy right here, this man right here, leave him alone. Yeah. It troubled me all night. Leave yeah. him alone. But he couldn't imagine the kind of trouble, he, he couldn't imagine the kind of trouble that he would have received, amen, if he had a stay, if he had a made a decision outside of what the government, the Roman Empire, the Roman government would have wanted to be done to, to appease the people, mm -hmm. yeah. the Jewish people, amen. So when we look at that place, 
You know, the, they incited them. Number two, it is the launching place of our faith. Amen. Number two, it is the launching place of our faith. It is here where Pilate hand was forced to have Jesus beaten and crucified. It is the launching place of our faith. Remember when we go over to, I believe it's uh, Isaiah chapter 53, amen, it talks about him being bruised, that he was bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our transgressions. Yeah. The chest time of our peace was placed upon him. Amen. And so this is the launching place of our faith because we are, what we are, uh, what we celebrated on Friday, on Good Friday, amen, was about the, about him being tried, about him being beaten, and about him being crucified. Amen. amen. All of these things are transpiring, but right now he's on the platform. And so there's something that God is relating to us because they think that they're doing something that's going to, that's going to take back the attention of the people. See, it is here where we again, where we gain insight and strength to endure hardship. Hear me, people. It is here where we gain insight and strength to endure hardship. Though the example through through the example given to us by Jesus, in Him being loved one minute, hated the next, scourged, lied on, and mistreated without cause, Pilate said it himself and sought. To let him go free. Because he found no fault in him. And we can find this in John chapter 19. Verses 10 through 12. Yeah. He found no fault in him. Yeah. Amen. There was nothing that he had done. That was worthy of the. Uh, of the of the, the judgment or what the people were asking to happen. And really it was the religious leader, there was the religious leaders in that day that were asking him, asking him to crucify our Lord and our Savior. Yeah. So in the midst of what Jesus was going through, let's look at the picture of our Lord and Savior on this platform where he's being judged by a government of this world. Yeah. Let's look at the platform. Let's look at the platform of the fact that the man that he loved, the man that he poured into, the man that he taught, led his enemies to him and turned them over to his enemies. Yeah. Let's talk about betrayal. How many of you in your lifetime at one time or another has been betrayed by somebody that you have put trust in and that you have loved? I'm talking about the platform that shows us how to stand in the midst of adversity. Yeah. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus is teaching us in this very hour through the power of humility. See, on the outside, it looks like he's defeated. Yeah. It looks like he, you know, they talking about, listen, isn't this the man that fed the, the thousands with the loaves of bread and the fish? Isn't this the man that gave sight to the blind and yeah. healing to the deaf? Isn't this the man that cast out the devil and had a man clothed in his right man? Yeah. Isn't this the man that raised people from the dead? Yeah. I mean, how is it that he's in the hands of the Roman Empire and the elders of our own people? How is it that they were able to lay hands on him? I've seen Jesus be uh, at the verge of getting thrown off a cliff and walk out in the midst of him without being touched. I mean, I don't know if you used to watch cartoons when you was little, but I can remember watching both Bunny, and it would be a crowd of things going on, and dust would be kicking up, and feet and boots would be shown, and and then Buzz Bunny would be standing on the side, eating on the carrot, talking about what's up, Doc. Yeah. And I just believe Jesus just got out the way and said, you know, I got work to do for my daddy. Yeah. Hey, Amen. I'm gonna get on out of here, Doc. Hallelujah, I'm not concerned about what you're doing. It's not yet my time. They could not lay hands on him because it was not his time. But now it is his time. I come to tell you, Spirit of Life, now is your time. Because this thing is a platform for the real church. He given it by example. We see this thing for what it is. Oh, we can't come to church. Oh, I'm going to worship my God. Right. Amen. It was an honor for the apostles back in the day. Just to get beat. Hey, they ain't laying no hands on us. But hey, if we get locked up for serving God, amen, we're going to sing some hymns. We're going to give God some praise. Amen. Because, amen, that's, that's a glorious thing to be persecuted for yeah. Christ's sake. Christ's sake. And he said, yeah. great is your reward when you are persecuted for my name's sake. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But because of the insistence of the Jewish people, namely the Pharisees and Sadducees, he was forced to carry out their evil desires because Jesus endured 
such hostility, we are able to stand in this evil day. Hear me again. Because Jesus endured such hostility, yeah. we are able to stand in this evil day. Yeah, when it appears that everything is against us, we find strength through the master's example of the weakness of the flesh and the great power of his spirit to remain silent unto death, even unto the death of the cross. Yeah. For this very reason, he came through the birth canal of a woman, being the word of God, wrapped up in sinful flesh, yeah. yet never sinning, for there was no sin in him. And you can find reference to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. If you go to Romans chapter 8, verse 3, it says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. It's in the flesh. See, when Adam fell, like I said before, when everything in him fell. So we were, David said it like this, I was born in sin and shaped by iniquity. We were born into this thing. But God, <laughs> glory be to God, and thanks be to our God for sending our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I want to talk to you about this platform, this elevated place, amen. This place where they had placed the Roman, uh, the judgment seat. It was the judgment seat there, amen. But I'm telling you, not was it just Jesus being judged, but it was the sins of the world being judged. The very thing that we were supposed to have went through, Jesus was going through that for us so that we would not have to suffer that kind of pain and agony. Because God has a, God always had a different intent for mankind, amen? He always had a different outcome for the people that he created in his image and in his likeness. He always wanted us to look like him, smile like him, think like him, talk like him, walk like him, follow after him, amen? God always wanted the people who knew the power of the word, amen, and that would have fellowship with him, a real relationship, Amen. How many know that in a real relationship, amen, I don't have to guess or wonder uh, what's on your mind because I know that you love me. You got the best intentions for me. Amen. amen. I can trust you with a real relationship and a covenant relationship. Amen. I can say to you, man of God, my pulpit is your pulpit just as you have said to me. Why? Because we have a real godly kingdom relationship. And in that relationship, there is trust. And we do not break the, the, the trust. We don't break that covenant and what Jesus is doing where the thing was broken before where there was a separation from God where we were locked away in gross darkness God sent the light the light of life Lord, so that he can illuminate us and reconnect us back to God yeah. Yeah. so here we see that it's more than just Jesus being judged by that government and by the elders and his own people, amen. It's more than that. What's being judged and what's being brought to the forefront in everything is number one, the Roman Empire and the Jewish community. Everything is being judged, even the things that we have done, the things we have not done, the things that we may come into, whatever the case may be. We have, now all those things are being judged. Yes, sir. Number three, hallelujah. So in this elevated place, this tessellated place, a paid place, this place of judgment, this, this place where they called themselves making a public spectacle of our Lord and Savior was really the opposite through faith. See, God was making a public spectacle of the devil. He was making a public spectacle of sin. He was making a public spectacle of death. He was making a public spectacle of hell. He was making a public spectacle of those things that were crooked. He was making a public spectacle of the grave. You see, through faith in God, Jesus paved the way for us all that we that believe. See, he paved the way. That's why Gabbatha is an important place. Amen. Because it's a place of judgment. Amen. And just as they call themselves judging our Lord and Savior, God is seated up in heaven and he was judging all things over that human court. Do you hear me? Come on. God was sitting, God was sitting in heaven and he was judging all things over that human court. He was judging the human court. He was judging.
judging the Roman Empire. He was judging, amen, the Jews. He was judging the Gentiles. He was judging the Greeks. He was judging the Ethiopians. He was judging the Chinese. He was judging the Japanese. He was judging the Europeans. He was, hey, amen, Italians. It does not matter. The Africans. Everything was being judged on that paid, that paid place, on. on that platform. Yeah. It was being demonstrated through Jesus Christ. Yes, mm -hmm. Amen. So when we look at this place right. and him going through the trial, amen, and being judged as though he was a guilty man, but yet he had knew no sin. Mm -hmm. uh, Colossians chapter 2 verses 13 through 15 says, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made a lie together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Yes, sir. Give God some praise right here. What are you saying? What are you saying, man? Jesus. What I'm saying is that when, when, when he was judged, said scourge him, he was beaten. Mm -hmm. the, the nails and the chunks of glass and all that things oh, that was God. in that whip. Yes, sir. Amen. It was a miracle of God that he survived the 39 lashes. Come on. Come on. It is said that if he had got hit one more time that he would have died. Well, I come to tell you that it was a miracle that he was still standing. Yes. Because every time they hit him with that whip, it tore out a chunk of his flesh. Yeah. The Bible declares unto us that when they beat our Lord and Savior, when they got down beating him and smashing a thorn of crowns on his head and pulling out a plug of his beard and, and spitting on him yeah. and, and mocking him and, and, and making fun of him, they say in the uh, in a, in a, uh, King James making sport of him. Amen. They were making sport of him. They was they was trying to uh, humiliate him in, in front of all the people. They were trying to humiliate him in front of his in front of his uh, citizens, in front of his his people, in front of his countrymen. They were trying to humiliate him. Yes, sir. They were trying to make him look bad. Oh, is this the man that you're following, amen? Is this the man that you believe in? This man is beaten? Look at him. Look at what's going on. Look at what's happening to him. Jesus. But listen, in the midst of him being beaten, okay. amen, each strike that he took, Jesus. he was taking it for you, woman of God. Yeah. He was taking it for you, man of God. So that you wouldn't have to suffer that. Yeah. So you wouldn't have to go through that evangelism. You wouldn't have to deal with that kind of pain and that kind of hurt. Yeah. See, Jesus was beaten so bad that he did not even look human. They beat him beyond human recognition. You know, I got a cross that I wear daily, and that just to remind me to carry my carry my cross daily. I carry my cross daily. I got a cross, amen, amen. I, I have a cross that I wear, amen, and it's got Jesus just laying up there so nice, amen, but it wasn't like that. It was a bloody mess, I'm coming to tell you, that nobody could recognize him. He looked it like a monster, a bloody monster. He didn't look human. He looked it like, a, hey, he was unrecognizable. When he was beaten, that's how bad they beat him. He was a bloody mess, amen. I just come to tell you that when we were locked away in sin, we were unrecognizable. We didn't look like God. We didn't talk like God. We didn't walk like God. There was a hot mess, a bloody mess. Jesus. We didn't look like God can recognize us. That's why he said we were separated from him. I don't even recognize you. I can't even tell who you are. Because of the sin and because of the curses and because of the disease that has been all in your body and your DNA from the sins of your fathers. So when you look at this platform, this platform is demonstrating the power of God's grace. Therefore, men of God, that's why when they try to tell me that you're going to have problems with this, I call it uh, whatever they want to call it, but I don't use the name because I uh, my tongue is for giving God praise. But they keep trying to make me afraid. I'm not scared of anything. I'm not fearing anyone because God is with me and I am with God. My faith is in Him. That's why I drove two and a half hours to come and worship with you this morning because I refuse to be afraid. I have family 
members telling me, hey man, you better be careful. Listen, I'm going to hug my brother. I'm going to hug my sister. We're going to praise God together. We're going to give him the glory. But you say, well, Pastor, how can you have this much confidence? Stand on Psalms 91. Hey, stand on Psalms 91. I will not be afraid of pestilence or no terror that walks in the new day or at night. Hallelujah. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near my dwelling. Only with my eyes shall I see the reward of the wicked. They thought they were doing something when they were beating our Lord and Savior. And to add insult to injury, they're going to throw a ragged cross on his shoulder and tell him to carry his own execution instrument. Come on. My God. Jesus. But the Bible tells us that it was a man that helped him carry it up on the hill. Oh, it is an example of what God wants us to do. We have to also be partakers with Jesus in his sufferings. We have to carry our cross Day. We help him carry the cross yes. to the world. Well, what is the cross? The cross is the finished work. Yes. The cross is yes. the finished work. Yes, Lord. So here he is being nailed in his hands and nailed in his feet, amen, and hanging up there. They said he hung up there all days for hours Jesus. in excruciating pain. Yes. And get this. In the midst of being judged, in the midst of being beaten, in the midst of being crucified, he, they said he did not say a mumbling word. He didn't utter a word. The only thing that he said is when the man asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Don't you know that I have authority to set you free or to bring or, or, or uh, pronounce you death? He said, listen, there is no power that you have except that which has been given from above. Amen. And so if my father wills that, amen, so be it. But hey, you don't really have the power. The power is standing in front of you that you call yourself judging. My God, that's something to say. The power is standing in front of you that you're trying to judge. See, you're looking at me and you're wondering like, man, you, you want to call me a fool because I want to go to church and worship and praise God. But any believers out there will say you're the fool because you should be running to the church. Why? Because there's a different type of energy that is flowing in the house of God. And when the spirit and the presence of God enters into the house, healing is in that house. Deliverance is in that house. Breakthrough is in that house. The fire of God is in that house. How many know that God is a perfect God? There's nothing crooked or perverse within him. So if you got the presence of God on you, guess what? Ain't nothing cricket up a verse can stay in you out. If it's there, it's only because you allowed it to be there. But God, my Bible tells me He's given me power to tread over serpents, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy, and nothing deadly shall by any means harm me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They thought that he was crazy. They tried to humiliate him. They beat him, nailed him to the cross. He's hanging up there all day. Look, then Jesus started to set things in order. Look, he's setting the business in order. He looked to his disciple and his mother. He said, listen, behold your mother. Behold your son. So he's setting things in order. Listen, you're not going to be without son. I got to go. You already knew when you had me. Because the angel told you my business was to be about my father's business. But I'm not going to leave you comfortable. I'm going to set the order. Then he said, listen, to those who have held me, held, held me hostage, to those who have judged me without cause, to those who have spit on me, beat on me, did all these horrible things to me, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I just believe that when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, he was talking about you. He was talking about me. He was talking about everybody who would dare to believe that he is the Messiah. Forgive them for they know not what they do. See, amen, we're going to go back to that last scripture that I read to you, amen, because it's powerful. Jesus. But he made a public spectacle. See, they were trying to make a public spectacle of our Lord and Savior. Uh -huh. But what Jesus was doing was he was making a public spectacle of sin. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, he was making a public spectacle of Satan. Yes, we are not those who fear for our lives as the world does with our right. hope. But because right. we have a hope that is greater than anything that's yes. on the face of this planet that's been made with man's hands or even conjured up in his mind. For the word of God tells me to them that love him. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has. Oh, hallelujah for them. Hallelujah that love him. Hallelujah. So I don't have to fear for my life. I don't have to worry about a thing. Number one, kingdom fire is on its way. Number two, spirit of life has already been laying the way, paving the way for kingdom fire. Amen. I came here before her. Remember, I said somebody had to pave the way. See, see, spirit of life is paving the way for kingdom fire. Kingdom fire running up behind spirit of life. That means that somebody is about to be changed. There's some things that's about to be loose. Oh God. Oh God. So Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And just like us, because we God cannot look upon sin. Yes, Lord. For the first time in Jesus' life, come on, preach. He has never been separated from the presence of God. Never. never. I say it's about to not. Come on. My God, my God, why have you forsaken oh me? God. Lord God, why have you forsaken me? How many of you been locked away in a place where there was no peace and you were tormented within your mind? You were afraid and paranoid. You knew you, you knew things were not right. You kept looking around the corner thinking that something was going to get you. Something was going to kill you. You weren't going to make it to see another day. How many of you have suffered some hard things? Jesus said, Forgive them. So you've been in that place where you felt like God was not have, where God would have nothing to do with you. I know I've been there. You've been in that place where you felt like God was not even there. It was hard to even conceive in your mind. Is God even real? Where are you? Yeah. Jesus said, Why have you forsaken me? See, we all have been in a place in that lockdown, in that, that dirty place of being forsaken, of feeling forsaken. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says that he gave up the ghost. He said, Father, it is finished. It is finished. I come to tell you, Spirit of Life, it is finished. I know that we got to walk some things out, but God already done judged all of this. All of this already been taken care of. All we got to do is just walk it on out. All we got to do is walk and follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. Because he has already paved the way. Gabbatha. He has paved the way. Gabbatha. He has paved the way. Gabbatha. He has already made a way for us. Amen. Amen. I know you think that we look. I look like I'm losing or something. I might not look like what you think I ought to look like. Amen. But I come to tell you, I got something on the inside of me that can't nothing on the face of this planet stop. And that's my faith in God. Hey. Bible tells me they laid him in the tomb. He was in there, what? For three days. Yeah. I can hear my daddy talking at my wow. All day Friday. Come on. <laughs> yeah. all, day, all night Friday. All, all day Saturday. All night Saturday. Yeah. But early Sunday morning. He rose up with all power in his hand. I come to tell you that the resurrection and the life, amen, is not just in a place that's, place that's far away. Our mouth, it's in our heart, it's in our confession, it's in our belief. Hallelujah! Give God the praise and the glory because our Lord and Savior ain't dead no more, He's alive and well. He's not no fragment of my imagination. This ain't no Stephen Spielberg movie. This is God at work. Hallelujah! He is alive and well and seated at the right hand of the Father. So I'm going to go right here. Back to Colossians chapter 2 verses 13 through 15. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made a lie together with him. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against you. Oh my God. Against us. Which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way. Having nailed it to the cross. Yes, having disarmed. Listen. He has disarmed principalities yes. and powers. Yes. 
He has made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. Come on. So that's why the Bible says, to one, it is foolishness. And to the other, it is, it is the hope. It is the life. It is the thing that causes us to keep moving forward when everybody else is falling away. Amen. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you separate the real from the fake. This is the way that you'll see those who are called his and those who have just been playing with it. Amen. Because you ain't going to find them in the church today. But I believe that there are some believers, hey man, that are in here that's ready to give God a support. Because you know that there ain't nothing that's going on in this world that can stop us. Because what? Because we belong to him. Amen. If I buy a shirt like I brought this suit. Amen. Nobody has a right to take this suit and do whatever they want with this suit. This is my suit. What I'm saying to you, God said that you are my temple. Hallelujah. You are a holy temple. For I have sanctified you unto myself by myself in myself. I have adopted you as my son and as my daughter. That's the reason why we can cry out, I have a father. That's the reason why we can call on the name of Jesus and see, I call it God kind of results. <laughs> we are a kingdom people. Hallelujah. We're not worried about the governments of this world. We're not concerned about no devils, no demons. We're not concerned about no viruses, no diseases. Oh yeah, we respect everyone. Don't get me wrong, we use wisdom. Yes sir. But my Bible tells me that there is a name that is above every name in yeah. heaven and on the earth. Yeah. And at that name, every yeah. knee shall bow. Yeah. And every tongue shall confess yeah. that Jesus is Lord of Lords yeah. and King of Kings. Let's give God some praise in this place. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. So we see here. Jesus. When you get ready to go home today. Yeah. Go home with confidence. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Do what you need to do to make sure that you're safe and yeah. that your family is safe. Come on. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Amen. But when God demands, Jesus said it like this when they were talking about taxes with his Jesus. disciples. And he showed them a coin. And he said, who faces on that coin? Yeah. They told him who the face was. He said, well, then, okay, render to Caesar with the Caesar, but render to God with his God. Don't you let nothing or no one or anything on the face of this planet stop you from giving God the praise and the worship that is due him. Yeah. Yeah. My people that did not come with me today, they're at home. I instructed them to take at least 30 minutes to an hour just to worship. Yeah. Just to worship in your home. The yeah. Bible says that when you go into the secret place yes. come on, come on. Yeah. and pray. Come on. He said, he who sees in secret will reward you openly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I knew that my brother was going to have church today. Amen. Amen. And I drove all the way so that I could fellowship with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 So what I want you to do is just stand to your feet. Yes. I'm, I'm done. Viewers. Huh? viewers. Amen. To our viewers. Amen. We want to thank God for you joining in to us today. This is Spirit of Life Church. They have allowed me to come and minister to you on this on this morning. We pray God's blessings upon your life. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just say this simple prayer with me. My God. My God, who is in heaven, is in heaven. Hallowed, be your name. hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your kingdom come. And, your will be done. and your will be done I have heard the word today, I have heard the word today. And, I believe and I believe that Jesus, that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and I believe you raised him from the dead with all power, with all power. he is alive Alive. Now, Father, now I receive Jesus Christ. I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Personal now make Lord me Savior. alive unto you yes, through, faith. through faith. If you have said that prayer with me, you are saved. Yes. 
I want to encourage you to get into a Bible believing church where you may be taught the word of God, where you may be admonished and built up in your faith. Stay close to the saints. Once this thing is lifted and we're able to move around freely as we want, I pray that maybe one day you'll be able to join us in praise and worship service. Amen. Amen. Until we see you again, God bless.